Hey guys, Peter Brown and Justin here, and I think, you know, we're coming to the end of CES, and this year has proven that the gaming landscape is changing more than ever. In years past, maybe it was a graphics card that you would see, or some weird proprietary third-party controller, but there are so many different innovations popping up at this show in particular that are worth pointing out. And one of the big ones that I think might really have a big impact down the road is cloud gaming. We've got NVIDIA with their grid system, which is a uh, you know, off-site server-based cloud streaming service. And then you've got PlayStation Now, which I think is really going to talk to the console audience. The big question is, how well are these going to work? Because like, if it, it's, these aren't final services. The NVIDIA grid is something that is going to be going into beta that some people are using now. PlayStation Now is going into beta at the end of the month. If these things don't do well, if these things aren't the, the high performance thing that, that people expect. If, if the performance isn't as good, if the latency is too high, like the, these are things that are just gonna fall, they're gonna fail on the vine. But if they're doing really well, this could be something that potentially changes the, the entire console landscape. Another big topic that's popped up, not just in gaming, but also in just entertainment in general, are 4K displays. Uh, gaming itself is sort of growing with this technology, and we're seeing games like Assassin's Creed 4 already shipping with 4K support with all their high-res textures. Um, the technology is still young, but I think CES is showing us that it's really only going to be a matter of a couple years before people will have these Ultra HD displays in their living room playing these amazing-looking games. One of the other really big innovations we're seeing at CES is the changing in mobile and tablet gaming and how it's becoming more and more popular. And one thing is the Tegra K1 chip, which I think could be a really big game changer. Yeah, NVIDIA has been sort of innovating a lot in the mobile space over the past few years with their Tegra line, which is now the Tegra 4. But what the K1's doing that's really special is it is bringing uh, desktop-grade Kepler CUDA cores to mobile devices. And what that means is that we're seeing graphics that are on par with PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360, which is something that traditionally mobile couldn't really handle. I think there's still a challenge of dealing with, you know, how you control these games, right? It's a, it's a, that's sort of a thing that needs to be explored a little bit more. But if anything, the technology is really starting to catch up as things shrink and become a lot more powerful. And Tegra K1 is the first example of, I think, what we'll be seeing a trend leading down the road. Oculus VR has become sort of a familiar face over the past year or so at different events, and their, uh, their VR Rift headset is continuing to improve with every show. And right now they've added positional tracking and better displays. They're getting closer and closer to the consumer model, but I think once we finally get there, as impressive as it is now, it's going to be phenomenal and I think change gaming for a lot of people. They don't like to give us hard details on the other things that are working on, but they, they do definitely like to tease us. This was my first time getting to try it out and, and just having it move so naturally with you, putting you inside the, basically inside the game is such a cool experience. If they add like, the ability to track your hands and maybe partnering with some other guys to make some game, I know John Carmack is working with them now directly to make games for the system. This could be something that is really, really big down the line. And last but not least, it's sort of an inevitable thing that we're going to talk about is Steam Machines. We've been talking about it a lot this week. There are so many things to say, so many questions that are left unanswered. But one thing that's for sure is that Valve's initiative is mixing up the gaming space. It's sort of putting a lot of pressure on PC manufacturers and console manufacturers. And I think we're going to see that a year from now, a couple years from now, Steam Machines are going to be a very viable product that are, it's really going to change the marketplace. Yeah, a lot of people maybe are, are trying to couch this as a console killer, which I think is, is overstating what they're going to be able to do in a, in a short amount of time. But it's the way that they're going to change the marketplace as a whole, and, and especially if they're successful in, in the ways that we're hoping they are. Along with cloud gaming, Steam Machines could, could be something that really changes what we think of as gaming and how we're able to access games. Yeah, and you know, with that, that's basically the most of what we've seen is CES, and it's all been pretty impressive. Uh, traditionally, the show is not pretty much about gaming, but the thing is, as gaming grows and the technology grows, it's going to sort of start to penetrate the mass market, and it's really interesting to see what's happening, and I'm looking forward to see us next year to see where the technologies that are exciting today will be when they have a little more time to mature. All right, guys, thanks again for sticking with us all week. We have a few more things coming, but this has been a great CES, and there's a lot more to come. Stay tuned to GameSpot, follow us on social media. You know how to do it. Thanks for watching.